Hello, and welcome to the Of Myths and Men podcast, this week's winner of the Eccentric Electrician's Enterprise Electrical Audio Award. Oh, well said. I am your host, Adam Holcomb, and I'm joined today by co-host, Dylan Blumenberg. Adam, I'm disappointed you couldn't come up with a thesaurus word for a award that starts with E. Audio also stroke? doesn't start with E. That's true. I I didn't catch that one, though. No. <laughs> snuck that one by me. And our uh, number one wanker is our special guest, Valya Chihoda. My favorite thing in the world is, because I, I, I'm a soccer fan, an avid soccer fan, is when you American... You work out a lot, too, right? I, I'm, I do a lot, yeah. But when American people who are like into the sport now, and they, they have teams in the U.S., when they watch soccer... But they do like British chants and British terms, and you hear like this group of fifty American guys yelling "the referee is a wanker," <laughs> but in just American accents. It's the worst, best thing in the world. That's pretty funny. You Look think they up. should come up with their own original ones? You're saying? Well, yeah, it, it takes time to develop the culture, and the culture is built off of a foreign thing, so it it, it makes sense. It's just like, just say he's an asshole. That's what you would say normally. Yeah. Why are you taking? This thing that you don't say, and then using that—it's just—it just, it just sounds so awkward. Appropriation. Dude, that, no kidding. Is that what that is? Yep. Okay. Our podcast brings together three unknowledgeable individuals who spend a day pretending to be experts on mythology. Each week, we will just discuss a different god or creature, rotating out the lead mythologist. We will discuss its habits, its attitudes. We will tell a tale, and we will end on a debate on who would win in a mythological fight club. And today's lead mythologist will be myself. And yourself as a wanker. What up, Adam? I am not a wanker. (laughs) It was very rude. I mean, he's kind of a wanker, though. The referee Uh, is a wanker, though, am I right? The referee is a wanker, though. (laughs) So, the creature that I have brought to you today is the Wendigo. Wendigo? I know this one. I'm glad you do, because it's an important creature in our culture. The Wendigo is from Algonquian folklore. Algonquian? Just, yeah, Algonquian. We'll get to what that means later. I think it's Al- Isn't it Algonquin? Nope. There's All an right. I and an A and an N. All right. I w- I'm curious to see. And is described to this. be a man eating man monster that is more monster than man. It makes its home in the northern forests of the Atlantic coast and Great Lakes region of the United States and Canada. That's what Algonquian means. But why are you calling it Algonquian? Because that's shorter than Atlantic Coast and Great Lakes region of the United States and Canada. Oh, what about acronym? this? Algonquian. God damn it. <laughs> Do you hear that volume? <laughs> what you're saying is right, but his is an acronym for something else. An acronym for Algon- Algonquian? No, Algonquian? He was saying... Yeah, weren't you saying that yours is an acronym for some large lakes and shit? <laughs> no, it's the region. The Algonquian region is well, then it's Algonquin. Atlantic Coast. It's Algonquian. Apparently, according <laughs> he to literally the mass YouTube just, channel. He just used YouTube to it. prove my point. It sounds incorrect. I have it's a question not... about the creature, though. You said it's more <laughs> monster than man, and it eats man. So what percentage of man does it have to be for it to be considered a cannibal? Oh, we'll get there. Believe me. Because it's actually... And we're there. Uh, you know what? I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, give me like uh, five minutes and you'll have your answers. You got it. They are historically associated with murder and greed, particularly the insatiable kind, and is symbolic to winter, aloofness, the north, starving, coldness, king and the north, famine, and starvation. <laughs> what, was, what was that one with the accent? Yeah, go what? over those again. Can I can I hear that what, the King in the North one again? So the Wendigo is symbolic to winter, aloofness, the North, starving, coldness, King in the North, famine, <laughs> and starvation. All right, yeah, so I see what you're talking about. What I was asking is when you said King in the North, where are you? Was that north. what accent was? That? Are you doing like an Italian accent? King or is in that the an North. English accent? Are you eating something while you say that? That was a that was a Northern Westerosi accent. Oh, okay. What is that? King of the North. Okay. King of the North. King of the North. North? It's, uh, 
Yes, North. North. It's Game of Thrones. Oh, that that's a good thing. At the uh, one of the episodes, there's a bunch of people chanting "King in the North." Oh, do they chant with an accent? Don't worry. <laughs> Is yeah. that is this like the people chanting the referee's a wanker? Yeah, pretty yeah, much. <laughs> Adam, come up with your own <laughs> kings I'm of the sorry. north. I'm just imagining you as an extra on that on Game of Thrones now, also chanting. <laughs> they're like, what? Is, do you guys hear? Something like I look, <laughs> I look perfectly normal. King in the north, king, like, just like normal clothing. He's one of the people they set on fire in that one scene. Sure. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the fire festival, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Some common characteristics for the Wendigo are malevolent, untrustworthy, cannibalistic, narrow-minded, supernatural, nasty, quick-tempered, over-emotional, and ignorant. And king of the north. And king of the north. King of the north. So there, that answers your question a little bit. Uh, cannibalistic is one of the ways to uh, describe it. It's characteristic. And we'll get into that a little further because it actually is pretty much 50% man, but or maybe 49% man. Uh, it depends on how long it's been a Wendigo. Is that like modern day, like, thirsty guys? Would they be considered, like, 10% man? It's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a millennial joke. Because uh, there's, like, the guys who are super, 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 like, feminist, but they're not actually... They're just trying to get with the girls there, so they're oh, not yeah. very like they're very thirsty about it. You know, like they're yeah. very they're like good pro word. women, but like yeah. to a weird degree, you know. Yeah, for real. Like Dude. you're one of them. Thirsty AF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A Wendigo was described by Mister Basil Johnston, and who? his quote: "Basil Johnston." Oh, I meant who? Like, why should we care about this guy? Uh, he's a he's a Wendologist. He's got a That's badass a, name. Did you make this who, guy up, Adam? Tell me. I the did truth. not. I did Tell not. Me the truth. Google. Is it, Google. Is it Basil, Basil Johnston. You sure it's not B-I-S-I-L? Basil? Basil. B-A-S-I-L. The spice basil? is called basil. He is a living basil. How would you pronounce <laughs> the word C U M I N? Cumin. <laughs> All right. I, I'm coming in your bathroom. <laughs> Oh, I put cumin on everything. Oh, I love saying that. I'm cumin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So All right. Basil Johnston said, "The Wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation. Its desiccated skin pulled tightly over its bones, with its bones pushing out against its skin. Its complexion, the ash gray of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into their sockets." The Wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton recently disinterred from the grave. What lips it had were tattered and bloodied, unclean and suffering from suppurations of the flesh. The Wendigo gave off a strange and eerie odor of decay and decomposition, of death and corruption. That's a good ace description. I couldn't do better myself. That's why I stole it from Basil. (laughs) Yeah, that's all I got about that. So to get a little bit more into where these creatures come from and to help answer Valia's question from a while ago about cannibalism some legends say that to become a wendigo it is as simple as spending a night in a cabin and getting snowed in then running out of food and then having to eat each other what if it was that easy we'd all be wendigos right shit I mean, who I hasn't that, that happened trip to we had. i know right that was a good time so yeah a wendigo is a human or used to be a human and uh the real way to truly end up becoming a wendigo it all starts with attitude just like any success you need to be greedy and i don't mean just wanting money i mean insatiable greed you you need to want everything yeah you need to be thirsty (laughs) as fuck thirsty af and you gotta take it any way you want it this greed helps to ready your mind for its transformation to just want everything and then next comes the eating of human flesh once consumed with the utterly greedy minds mindset the changes will hit you like puberty in, mi- in middle school then you'll be you'll spend the rest of your life always wanting to eat people also always wanting to be hungry just so you're aware so there is some downside to get a little bit more into it the wendigo is an incredibly good hunter and even has the ability to mimic voices to lure humans into traps 
Each time a Wendigo eats a meal, typically human, it grows in proportion to the meal, making it always hungry. So they can get pretty freaking big. In fact, the largest reported Wendigo could apparently bathe in seas without risk of drowning. The hero, Clifford the Red, was said to kill it, and the body was dragged and hidden somewhere in Europe. Some say it became the structure for Mount Everest, but Whoa. no one really knows for sure. No, Adam, I gotta ask, does Clifford the Red have any relation to Clifford the Big Red Dog? You knew the that jury's was still come out up. on that one. <laughs> you knew that was going to. What come about up head Heathcliff yeah. Huxtable, who was, who? Uh, of course, played by uh, Bill Cosby in the Cosby Show? No, no, no the relation man to with Bill the yellow Cosby. hat, Adam. <laughs> nope. Clifford the Big Red Dog. Maybe there's some stories that tell the tale of a giant red dog that fought this Wendigo, and others are just a guy named Clifford. Why don't people name their kids Clifford anymore? That's just a great name. Well, Cliff Blazinski. Rolls off the tongue. Is his full name Clifford, though? Gotta be. <laughs> what else would it be? Yeah. What, are you Cliff? stupid or something? <laughs> we did have a kid in our high school that was named Clint, I think I remember. It's a strange name. It's a strange name. That's Hawkeye's name. That's Clint the dude Barto from Stardew from Valley. MCU. Dude, the Dylan MCU. loves the MCU. God. Good Dylan thing you brought that it. up. Yeah. What's you, her, what's her favorite you watch... MCU? Um, <laughs> Batman. <laughs> That's a good one. Know. That's a good one. He's a uh, DC, is he? I like the Lord of the Rings. I don't know any of this shit. <laughs> Roast me in the comments. Lord of the Rings the is my favorite ranking. MCU. <laughs> That's the best one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to kill a Wendigo, you must stab it in the heart with a silver blade. Tricky in the best of circumstances. Then remove the heart and shatter it into pieces because it's basically ice. Then take the pieces, lock them in a silver box, which is to be buried at a church cemetery. Then when you're done with that, you have to hack apart the body with a silver-plated axe. Then salt and burn the body and scatter the ashes to the winds. If any step is missed or any part of it is missed, it can resurrect itself and then it would be very angry with you and lead to a very unpleasant death. This just sounds like a good way to sell salt. You're talking about these things that are the size of Mount Everest and you need to salt well, no, this entire they, thing. They can. That was the biggest one. Usually they're only uh, a little bigger than Man, humans. That was big salt back in the day. Making the comeback. Big salt? Big Fucking salt. Morton's. Morton's <laughs> being assholes that's how, over here. That's how the Morton Empire started. Yeah. Wendigos. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the tail then. All right. I've got a bit of a long one for you. Do the Wendigos have long tails? No, they don't. They're just like humans, but like if you grabbed an, each limb and pulled them really hard and then kind of peeled some of their skin away and pulled their teeth a little longer and to push their eyes in a little bit more and then took Jesus. all their clothes off. <laughs> Mythology was created through an early form of storytelling, so we like to spend a little bit of time delving into a tale that involves our subject. We will be a little bit more in-depth with analyzation to better understand the story, and each week you'll have a tale to bring to your cabin to tell to all of your friends before you eat each other when you get snowed in. It was a frosty night, the kind that would freeze your butt cheeks together at the <laughs> slightest wet fart. John Deere sat alone in a cabin waiting. Food and water ran out four days ago. Oxygen will run out tomorrow. But there were still no sign of Leroy Parrish. Leroy was John's friend, confidant, and lover. Now Leroy was dead. John could not sit around the cabin any longer. He packed on several layers of clothing, took a deep breath, and entered that frosty night like Leroy's anus during a steamy love se making session. <laughs> the icy winds bit at John's flesh like a thousand little piranhas. His breath froze on his dark beard, creating an art piece not much unlike the starry night. Still, John trekked through the woods, heading straight for the city he knew would not be too far away. If he moved quickly, perhaps the thing will not catch him. The creature stalking these woods. The ones hunting him, instead of the other way around like it should be. Leroy was gone, lured into the woods by a voice. John has long suspected that voice belonged to a wendigo. In one glimpse as Leroy chased it, John knew what they were up against. 
This job's not worth the trident layers, John said to himself as he pushed his legs forward. You say trident layers? Yeah, because he's getting paid in trident layers. God. Is that the whole thing? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it happens often. That's what often. my 401k's in. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have so much fucking gum when you retire. Dude, it's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> The minutes turned into hours, the hours into days, the days into weeks, the weeks into months. It felt like years before he finally came out of the woods, but it was actually only about 20 minutes. Surprise struck him as hard as relief. His legs almost gave out, his eyes ready to weep freezing tears. But he pushed himself forward into the city, the silent city. John was not sure what made him suspicious first. The eerie silence? The various dead bodies? Or maybe the humongous creature that was bent over a body. The creature so like a human, yet so very unlike a human. John pulled several bottles from his pockets as he approached the creature. Glass bottles, just so you're aware. Passing a TV, playing some Batman movie. In a quick move, John smashed the bottles against a nearby wall, tying the broken bits between his fingers in a closed fist like some kind of janky spiked knuckles. The Wendigo turned, stared at him with dark eyes, blood pouring down his chin like a one-year-old celebrating his first birthday with a large vat of strawberry yogurt. Then it opened its mouth and the sound that came out would have caused John to piss himself if he had water in the last four days. I thought it was 20 minutes. Oh no, earlier in the story if you were paying attention, Sorry. food and water ran out four days prior. Oh my bad. Yeah. Cut that You gotta part. pay close attention. This Sorry. one's... <laughs> So, you came back to die with your city. (laughs) Jeez. Not this again. (laughs) The two charged at each other. Scene cuts. Credits roll. After credits, scene begins. Camera is zoomed in, spanning the torso of the large Wendigo as it lies on the ground, breathing in a rattled breath. John has seen his head resting on the body, but unmoving. Did he kill it? Will he get his trident layers? Scene ends. Oh, shit. That's a really good bit, like, the idea of someone being, like, they're talking to their financial advisor, they're about to retire, and they're like, what do you mean we don't have any money? I put everything into Trident Layers. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good webcomic. Yeah. You know what this makes me want to do? Play Bloodborne. Good (laughs) storytelling, Adam. Thank you. I tried my best. One of the things people love to debate about is who would win in a fight. Yugi Moto, duelist galore. We did Yugi Moto before. <laughs> or, well, we're doing him again. Who's the guy from or, Digiman? Or Yugi no. Moto's gra- no. grandpa. No, it's Yugi Moto. Or Yugi or Moto's grandpa. Poker World Champion winner Garrett Barley. Was that this weekend? <laughs> I was watching some of that. It was actually six and a half years ago. Oh. Which one? Um, which one can you get a waifu of? <laughs> Yugi. Definitely Yugi. <laughs> so his probably his win. name is Yugi Moto. True. Is yeah. Moto? Yeah. That's a stupid name. So in our Fight Club section, we indulge ourselves and talk about who would win in a mythological fight to the death. We will pit this week's subject against one we discussed in earlier podcasts with our lead mythologist, myself, defending the creature. And I get to challenge either Dylan or Valia. And Hit me with it. I will challenge. Fire away. Falia. Ooh. Accepted. So Dylan is our moderator. So what Can does we that refuse? mean for me? I've never done this before. <laughs> no, we can't refuse. We've tried refusing before. Haven't you? Did you do it like two weeks ago? Also, doesn't Dylan do it quite often? <laughs> Approximately a third yeah. of the time. Yeah. yeah. Dude, a third of the time is too much. I gotta get down to quarters. All right. So while Dylan is thinking of a good creature to pit against yeah. the Wendigo, the I will reminder. go over some stats. The Wendigo, we've decided, has a strength of five, a speed of six, an intelligence of three, and a durability of six, for a grand total of twenty. It's always hungry, and it's weak to silver. But it also has the ability to mimic voices, and it's a dang good hunter. You know, not just because it's also a 20, I think i got to go with the Baba Yaga. Which, if I remember Baba correctly, Yaga. was also your creature, Adam. It was. 
So, Baba Yaga is my enemy. L Bob's. My we got L Bob's with a strength oh. of three. Go ahead. Some extra strengths that I forgot to say for the Wendigo are that it's extremely resistant to cold weather, Uh-oh. so much so that they don't even wear clothes during a blizzard, and it can walk an entire marathon without taking a break. Wow. So it has that long distance durability and talk- then has voice mimicry. Are we talking about a 5 or a 10K? Yes. All right. Good answer. Uh, its weaknesses are getting stabbed in the heart by a silver blade and all that other jazz. It's always hungry, and the growing thing becomes difficult when it gets pretty large. Does it have growing that's pains when said. it gets that large? Yeah. I mean, that's got to suck. Like, you got to have that pain. Dude, does he get stretch marks on his back? Probably. Sick. All right, so Baba Yaga. We'll go over Baba Yaga. we got a strength of three, a speed of four, intelligence of seven. That's where this one really pulls ahead. And a durability of six for a grand total of 20. Got these vulnerabilities. Correct answers. Doesn't like those. Its specials <laughs> are shape changing, which I thought would be fun. Phosphory. What is that word? Prophecy. <laughs> and sosphory. We got phosphory and sosphory. Favorite thing of the episode thus far. <laughs> Alright. It's a uh, You know, I'm gonna be honest, I know how to pronounce that word, but reading it I was like how do you say this again? <laughs> Are you a rep why. for that for I Gwyneth totally Paltrow's spiritual out. bullshit company? No. We're no. selling phosphory today, guys. Let's set this scene, Dylan. So set it for us. We're on the seas, the high seas. How big is this this Wendigo? I'll say a little larger than a man, like I ate one or two, so I grew a bit. Alright. We're on a ship. We're talking high seas, a storm is raging. That might come into play on this. Why am I on this ship? Well, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> um, you're getting transported. The Baba Yaga and the Wendigo are getting transported to a prison island. Is this a mythical creature slave trade situation? No, they're trying to kill him. So mm. these people... They were transporting these these two, but then they broke out and started killing everyone, and now it's a final fight between the two great powers, the two great beasts on this ship. So everyone else is dead already? You know it. They're dead AF. And... Nice. Oh. Nice. Okay. I look over. Oh, wait, wait. I choose the number 13. All right. Hit me with it. 15. It was six. Adam wins. Fuck yeah. All right, I kill Baba Yaga. All right. <laughs> um, you do not kill him. <sighs> Folly, would you like to kill Wendigo? I, here's, I'm going to do a consequence, a sequence of actions with my oh, prophecy. Oh, wait, no, that wasn't my real move, though. <laughs> All right. Well, too late. Is, that, is it, am I up or not? No, it's Adam's. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I I'm stalking around the ship. I have a a pile of human bodies ready to eat. I'm very hungry. I'm always hungry. Uh, so I did nibble a little bit. So I probably have a little bit of a girth sprout, just a leg or two. Um, nothing too much. And I see this Baba Yaga going around. Uh, are you gonna be floating around in your uh, mortar mortar? The mortar or pestle. Am I, Which one's no, the bowl? I'm on the ground, ready to fight you like a punk. I don't know. Not That's flying. A good question. I'm not flying. Okay. Yeah, I no look and over at this old lady, and and I'm like, that looks like a tasty snack. I look over at this uh, at this old lady, and I just charge, ready to tear it limb from limb, starting with her lower left leg. If they I rip it off. I spin move, spin move evade, spin move, spin move, one more spin move, spin move. <laughs> oh, they're all working, just keep going. Backflip, gainer, onto the trucks, spin move again, evaded. You whoosh by, and I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> laugh successful. <laughs> and then a bunch of skateboard kids on the ship are like, look at that old lady, she's dope. And then I say back, you got that right, kids? And then right. and then I talk about how there's like a pedophile living near their home. All right. 
repeat your actual move here? Who went first? Me? What'd you do, Adam? Yeah. A damn. I looked over and I'm just barreling towards the old lady and going to rip off the lower left leg. All right. Um, Evade. Boy. That leg is hurting. It's not doing well. Yeah, not doing well. <laughs> you, you know, you tore it a little bit. It's kind of fine, but, you know, it's usable. Let me put it that way. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, very cunningly, here's what I do. So, D- D- he's standing in front of me, right? Wendy's ego? Yes. Wendy's ego is standing I, in front of me. I'm in front of you, and I just grabbed your leg, and I'm, like, pulling on it. You're still pulling on my off. leg, or what? Uh, I didn't let go. I grabbed it. I thought, you, I thought he it hurt off. my leg. I did. It's hurt. Okay, so you're, you're just grabbing on my leg. Okay, so here's what I do. Yeah, I pulled it really hard. All right, so I turn my body 90 degrees, so like, and then move forward. So basically, like, he's pulling at my leg, but I'm sort of like trying to, like, move forwards to get out of it. As I do that, I actually roll forwards MMA style while he's holding my leg still to an attempt to flip him over and get him right into an arm bar. Okay? <laughs> and then I arm bar his ass. You arm bar his ass? You really <laughs> trying to use Boy. your lowest stat? <laughs> Wait, which one did you use again? I didn't use one. I just did a, did a barrel. I just did a front roll and then an arm bar. But that's that's a part of intelligence. That's not strength. Dude, it's both. The jiu-jitsu is all intelligence, son. Either way, I mean, are you trying to dislocate? You're, you've are you got the success. You couldn't have a better arm bar. Break his arm, yeah. His arm is broken in Fuck many yeah. pieces. Can't wank now, you, Aryan boy. You broke my arm? You neo-Nazi. With my arm pretty fucked up. It's I It's, gone, it's pretty much like... Practically. Oh, yeah, it's like a noodle. So I use its newfound <clears throat> flexibility to slither like out dick. and kick away. Yeah. <laughs> And I and I crawl very rapidly into uh, around the edge, so I'm like behind some storage, and I use my expert hunting to find a good perk where I'm hidden, and I start like mimicking a voice to try to lure her over, and then when she appears, I just reach down, grab her from the jaw, the upper, or actually right into her mouth, fingers in the mouth, and rip off the upper part of her head. I don't go. Let me ask you this before uh, before we go any further. If you had to describe your dick as angel hair <laughs> pasta or lasagna noodle, what would you choose? The Wendigo's dick or yeah, my the Wendigo's one. Um, lasagna noodle. All right. Also, the the mimicry, oh, the voice mimicry terrible. is like people screaming. There is like someone screaming in pain, as if I went and found someone else to eat. And I'm trying to take advantage of Baba Yaga's goodwill nature that doesn't actually exist because she's not. Really I nice. just refuse to go to the voice. You didn't because his thing would like do like that. four rolls, right? He did like four things, right? Yeah, you didn't. It's do... It's all one. Well, oh, okay. technically, Roll, wrap it up. Nothing could happen to you. In fact, one of the corpses Suck it. woke up because he was so pissed at you trying to eat him and became woke. You gave him a little nibble. And he, he just, like, broke your face. He broke your nose and your eye socket. <laughs> That's your the worst I lit- How, Where did this dead body come from? You know, it was just one you were carrying around. I wasn't carrying any around. I thought you said you were carrying them around in the beginning. I did. I have a pile of them. All right. One of the bodies woke up in a cursed state. Which happened. Like, yeah. And it, Am uh, I hidden at least or no? I use no, my phosphor you're C you're like to, uh, full, you're to do You're basically it. in the middle of the ship. I mean, you rolled a one, Adam. That was... <laughs> nothing good happened on that one. I tried to get away and a corpse that wasn't quite dead woke up and punched me in the face. Yeah, he broke your nose. To my surprise, I fell down and now I'm just on the ground. Noodle arm, broken nose. Volia, what say you? Does the arm break that I did count as a permanent injury? Hell yeah, it does. <laughs> all right so i can i see him can i see the oh yeah wendy's goes yeah all right so here's what i do right i <clears throat> very intelligently right 
I see that there's like a barrel next to him. Is there like any objects next to him? Um, yeah, there's like like a barrel. <laughs> there's like some ropes and a, a couple cannons. A couple cannons. What about a barrel? Uh, I'm gonna say no because they probably stored those below deck. They're That's fine. Are, are there barrels. any cannon balls or just the cannons? Uh, there's one in the cannon. Okay, that's fine. So I basically sprint the cannon, right? And I go one leg onto the cannon and leap off in an attempt to, like, and then get height and then basically just use all that momentum and force and I wheel kick the, uh, the Wendy's goes into the face. Wheel kick. Wheel kick. Um... That would use speed and strength, most likely. Let's see. <laughs> You're two worst stats. Yes. So I, I like to play the long game. I mean, you kind of graze him. Mm. He's not hurting much. Mm. How was? The, how did my wheel kick look? Not not great. It was poor form. Um, That's disappointing to hear. Yeah, Joe Rogan would be able to do it way better. Mm. I got gotcha. you, Joseph Rogan. <laughs> All right. I grab I look up as Baba Yaga wheel kicks and I grab the foot mid kick. Mid kick? And then I just grab the So let's say what what leg were you kicking with? Right or left? Right. Okay, I grabbed your right leg and then I use my noodle arm to wrap around your left arm to hold you up and then I just chomp down hard right on the stomach just ripping guts out also feeding myself you give him you give him some good lacerations his leg is wrapped you're a little bit entangled he's not doing too hot after that one wait me she she's not she's she's not doing too hot (laughs) after that one don't make fun of dylan he doesn't know his gender that's true i know he's never taught him my parents never told me what i'm supposed to be Okay, so for, does he still have my leg at this point? Yeah, you're a little wrapped up. You guys are tangled okay. up. Same move as first round. Which I was... try to move forward after I turn 90 degrees, and as I do that, I roll straight into an armbar on the other arm. Is this the third Because that's what round? he's grabbing me. This would be the third, yeah. All right. <laughs> armbar. Boy, that, was, that almost ended it right there. <laughs> Bad. Fucking going Ronda Rousey. He scoops his ar- he scoops his arm out of there, his other arm, and uh, it's pretty unhurt. Mm-hmm. He's a little sore, but nothing he can go without. That didn't make I, sense. I say third time is <laughs> the charm. So um, like third time that, I do that, I'm gonna kill that him. doesn't help at all. <laughs> but I said it though, right? Yeah, you said it. Sick. You said third times the charm. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're really embarrassed. Yeah, you look like least, a fool. At least those I millennials curbs, are giggling. I curb stomp your fucking head. What? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> what is this for? This right. squat. Yeah. Stuff. You. Boy, that's got to count as a perm. That's a perm inge. Perm inge. Um, perm inge. You you give him a good beating on his face. He's. It's going to be a she. permanent. Yeah. I don't. Adam. <laughs> 20, 2019? What was that? Is that what yeah, was that? What, what are you trying to say here? Are you assuming these genders? Anyway. So, yeah, his face is crushed a little bit. Not too and too hot. Her face. Yeah, his face. I'm just going to say it from now on. Its face? Okay. Its face is crushed up. You know, when you step on a bag of lettuce. When you're trying to get it out of the refrigerator, but you end up dropping it and trampling all over it, it looks like that. That's what... Specifically know... spring mix, though. I sing that song from Always Sunny that Cricket, I think, sings where they break his legs. So he sings, they broke my legs, but they didn't break my spirit. <laughs> but I replaced legs with face. <laughs> and then in that, in that move, after I sing that, I basically... I basically, like, it's a distraction technique. I use my phosphory to just kind of distract. (laughs) And then as I'm doing that, he gets so entranced that I spear him, right? Pro wrestling style to death. All right. 
you say they and then forget the rest of the words and then you're so you're so upset that you can't remember these words that nothing else happens except you stumbling over Worth giving it. him a, a good tickle on the tummy with your leg Worth kick it. I bite off Baba Yaga's arm, and it looks like Jay Weather or Jay Walter Weatherman, <laughs> just blood spurting out from the sh- shoulder. Its arm is gone, along with you took out like, let's say, which arm do you bite? Right arm. So you bite the entire right arm, the head, and then like from the left arm down to like the middle of the torso. Like if a shark just bit this fucking guy, that whole part is gone. Girl. <laughs> head too? Yeah. Head. So is it safe to say Baba Yaga's dead? Yeah, dude. That thing is I destroyed. grow a little bit as well because I eat it. It's Arm a, bar. Good, good match. You just chop it like a big chopper. That's pretty much it. You roll a 20? Hell yeah, dude. Arm bar. <laughs> Wait, you're going to do an arm bar? Arm with, bar. With one arm? One arm. And no brain? <laughs> no head. <laughs> arm bar. Um, you almost had a successful one, ah, but it, it fails. So, so close, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Next time. Dude, you could have got him. They broke every part of my body. Man, if they you had that arm bar on round two, I would have had a hell of a time trying to figure out how an arm bar killed <laughs> this, this run ago. It's possible. It just make some shit up. Especially an arm bar by a creature whose strength is like on par with normal yeah. human strength. Like, I mean, you don't like need strength. Special. That's what I was saying. It's intelligence because you do the armbar. It's all about like leverage. It was a guy with strength arm bar. Yeah. <laughs> Today we learned about the Wendigo. We learned that it used to be a human that, through insatiable greed and lust and and cannibalism, turned into a man monster that eats men and women. Man monster. It doesn't. It doesn't judge race. No discrimination. We told the tale. We told the tale of it. A, a, battle between john deere and uh wendigo <laughs> john and deere. we found we found out the wendigo would annihilate with almost no damage done to it the, against the baba yaga you gotta broke the nose i mean besides the noodle arm in the noodle arm but whatever <laughs> but whatever yeah, noodle, arms. noodle dick you can listen to this episode and more at mythsandmen.com and you can also find a wiki that has most of your favorite creatures there. If it's not updated, that's because I haven't had time to update it. It's all right. If you've enjoyed what you've heard and think we did a good job in giving you a laugh or two, please take a moment to give us a rating and review so that more people can find this podcast. You can either do it at iTunes at itunes.mythsandmen.com or on Stitcher at stitcher.mythsandmen.com. And if you don't want to do it on either of those... You can still tell your friends about us so that you can make fun of our ineptitude together. Send us an email saying, hey guys, I really appreciate what you're doing. Do that too. Our email is, surprise, surprise, mythsandmen at gmail.com. Oh shit. If you have any tips on arm bars, send us an email also. Send us Joe Rogan's tips and (laughs) tricks. For updated news, you can follow us on Twitter at mythsandmen. Or on the Facebook page of Myths and Men. If you have a suggestion for a creature that we should talk about, you can contact us through a website or leave your suggestion in a review. You could also tweet us or comment on the Facebook too, I guess, or literally any possible way. We gave our email. You could email it to us too. And we hope to see you next week when we talk about something else. Talk about whatever you want. Baby, you can have whatever you like. The music you heard on this podcast is called Call to Adventure by Kevin MacLeod from Incompetech.com. It is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License. One of the things... Ah, you bitch. I was going to say... You're going to say what? Go ahead. (laughs) One of the things people love to... (laughs) Last time. One of the things <laughs> that was unintentional. <laughs> we need a break off pod just about Yu Gi Oh! What yeah. would be called? Of cards and cunts. <laughs> of Exodia oh, and did. other Exodia creatures. Blue eyes, white men. <laughs> um. <laughs>
Are you talking about the Aryan race? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> two sections. It's for uh, the Aryans who like Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a, it's a big uh, that's a good bit though people. too. Like the idea of you starting a podcast called Blue Eyes White Men and like it's about Yu-Gi-Oh but you're confused why you keep getting all these neo-Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Just like so toned after what's going to piss people off. Like the top the search is right, right. for Mein Kampf is that you're like well, why why is this the search term? <laughs> <laughs> the YouTube comments are all from people from like White Power Steve. Yeah. White Power <laughs> why do they keep talking about Yu Gi Oh? What is? 